worthy breaking of bread. Our scripture reading today comes to us from Paul's letter to the Church of Corinth, the first letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 through, let's see what the next page says, 32. Reading together. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink, some of them in an unworthy manner, without discerning the body, or the Lord's body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died, or in the Greek, it's fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined. Or, when we are judged, we are being disciplined by the Lord, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. In our reading from Acts this past Sunday, they talked about the breaking of bread. Now, we're not sure in Luke whether this is the actual communion meal or an actual fellowship supper. Um, they were also described as love feasts, which brought about a whole misunderstanding with outsiders of the church, thinking that it was some kind of orgy going on and eating cannibalism, eating the body and blood of the condemned savior of the movement was a popular myth being exchanged around the world. Our earliest recording of the words of Jesus Christ, or at least as they were remembered, actually comes from the Apostle Paul in his letter to 1 Corinthians, where the Corinthians are screwing it up, are screwing up the Lord's Supper. They are taking it with wild abandon. There seems to be a fellowship meal, and then some of them are drunk, some of them are arriving starving, some of them have ate their fill and are gluttons, and Paul is insisting on an orderly thing. However, it has been a sad tragedy that more often than not, these words of taking the body unworthily, meaning some kind of personal examination of one's status being implied that you may be unworthy to receive. The truth of the matter is, is the behaviors that the Corinthians were doing were unworthy of the Lord's Supper. And Paul is giving a, an opinion a bit on saying that the result of illness and death in the congregation is because God is punishing you for your lack of discipline with the Lord's Supper. Breaking bread is important, but the discernment isn't whether one is worthy. The discernment is whether the congregation has been treated well. You see, they weren't treating each other well and still yet participating in the Lord's Supper. And Paul is saying not to examine oneself, which one can do, but to examine. Is there anyone arriving late, still hungry, and you've eaten all the food? Are you completely smashed when receiving it and there's no wine left? for the others. As a group, are you taking care of one another? And if you are not taking care of one another, then you are participating in the Lord's Supper unworthily. If it's not involving sharing the bread with others, then you are unworthily taking the Lord's cup. Because Frankly, if it was all about a standard and quality, none of us would qualify for this. But as long as we are looking out for each other, considering one another, and as Paul will later explain, the more that one is looking out for the other, the more worthy you are, you are then you are participating correctly in the Lord's Supper. Now, certainly the words of Jesus about 
remembering some wrong and leaving your gift at the altar may be something to be thoughtful and considerate of. But as long as there is no needs, known needs around you as you're about to partake of the Lord's Supper, then receive it orderly and with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that we are declared worthy in the blood and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be mindful that when we receive the Lord's Supper, we are also to be reminded to look at others to make sure that we have been worthy servants, considering the needs around us rather than using the meal for selfish purposes. For the breaking of the bread is not for our own, but for everyone. Amen. Blessings to you and yours this day and always. Goodbye.